changes always happen over time. New styles and trends come and go, but there is an unfortunate trend in the uh, riding world and particularly in jumping that I want to address today and I want to give you an easy tip for making sure that you avoid this or if you've already been riding this way that you can correct it. So if this is your first time joining me, I'm Callie from CRK Training. The unfortunate trend that I'm referring to is where when the rider goes into jump position, they go into a very unstable position by bracing low in the heel, arching the back, or hollowing the lower back and pushing their hands on the horse's neck and relying on the neck for stability in the jumping position. A lot of times the rider will kind of lay on the horse's neck and the neck becomes the main support of balance uh, for the rider's position. The dangers here are if the horse has a trip, a stumble, or a refusal at the fence, or anything goes awry, the rider's in a really vulnerable spot. So instead, when we go into a two-pointer jump position, we want to think about maintaining a flat back, maintaining the, the softness in our hip, our knee, and our ankle joints, and allowing the weight to go to our thigh instead of just on the stirrups and trying to grip with the lower leg. In addition, we want to feel like our, our balance and our security in this position are independent of the horse's neck, meaning that you can maintain this position without leaning on your horse's neck so that you'll be a lot safer and a lot more stable if the, neck go, if the neck disappears, if the horse drops their head or again has a trip or a stumble. So one of the ways that you can find this better position is start just sitting. Think about finding a flat back, softening the, the um, joints in your leg, making sure that your lower leg is underneath of you and not push forward. And then think about your hip joint, which is right in here, and you're going to fold forward from your hip joint. Now, this is really one of the basic premises of the jump position, is that it's just a forward fold. It's a changing of the angle of the rider's body. So if I fold forward from here, and now I can just look up slightly with my head. This is a fun thing to experiment with that I learned from um, Wendy Murdoch for jumping position, is that when we go down, there's a certain point that if we look up too high, our back is gonna start to hollow. So what you wanna find is when you take your little fo forward fold, you wanna look up just to the point where you can maintain this secure or the stable flat position through your back. And now from here, we can transfer a little bit more weight to the thigh and to the stirrup, maintaining the other, other parts of the position. Just with any other riding position, the two point or the jump position becomes very dynamic. So if, um, if I pretend that Noel was going over a large fence, my body's gonna have more of an angle forward. My leg's going to come slightly forward to stay underneath of the, um, the balance point of my body. Or if she was going over a low cross rail, I'd have much less angle forward with my upper body. So the, the one exercise, the one tip that I wanna give you today is in developing this stability in the position through your seat and through your leg. Learning that it's okay to stay close to the saddle in two point, you don't have to be way out of the saddle. And also, learning to maintain your balance independent of the neck. The first thing that you wanna do is practice riding in your two point position at the walk and at the trot. So you wanna feel how at the trot, the joints of your ankle and your knee and your hip make these little adjustments and these little movements to absorb the movement of the horse. And you wanna feel like you're able to remain stable without leaning on the neck at the walk and the trot. If you start to feel like you lose your balance, you wanna find it by just letting yourself lower to the saddle instead of falling forward and again, leaning on the horse's neck. And then how you can progress from here is start going over a series of poles. And as you go over the trot poles, you're gonna start changing your hand position. One of the best ways to start is as you enter the poles, transfer your reins to one hand and put the other hand behind your back. You can do this with both hands. Next thing you're gonna do is come through and put one hand on your hip. Again, you can do this with both hands. And then you can come through and do one hand on your helmet. 
So by changing your hand position, you're essentially triggering your body to find the balance and find the stability without relying on leaning on the neck or holding onto the horse's mane in order to keep yourself in jump position. Your body has to start finding that stability through the leg and through the seat and you'll find that you start catching yourself, catching your balance by coming back to the saddle instead of falling forward. So you can do this through the poles, you can get creative by increasing the number of the poles, and then you can also build out small grids, starting with just a cross rail, and then build it out to even more as you get more and more comfortable riding in, uh, with your hands in these different positions and improving your balance. And you can adjust the height of the jump or the technicality of the grids to fit what's appropriate for you and your horse's skill level. Now I'd love if you could leave me a comment and just let me know what's been a struggle for you with jumping. Is there something that you find happens when you jump? Is it maybe your horse gets too fast or too slow? Or is it something happening with your position? You feel that you're getting left behind over fences or that you feel you, um, or maybe you're told that you lean too far forward. Do you feel really stable over fences or do you um, realize after this video that maybe you've been relying a little bit too much leaning on your horse's neck? So I would love to hear from you. Leave a comment down below. And as always, if you're watching this anywhere besides crktrainingblog.com, go there. That's where the best comments and conversation happens.